So today we're going to be talking about the reflection coefficients gamma in and gamma out. So if we have a two-port network, say it's characterized by some certain S parameters, which I'll denote by this matrix S, um, and it's connected to a load over here, let's call this ZL, and it's connected to a source over here with impedance ZS, Great, um, but we're interested not necessarily in the S parameters themselves, but how this whole network behaves. So if we attach a source to this network, uh, what is the reflection coefficient gamma in looking into this network? In other words, if I could transform this entire network with all its S parameters, ZL and everything into a single impedance, let's call it Zn, then I could simply calculate the reflection coefficient like I usually do, which is just Zn minus Zs over Zn plus Zs. And that'd be great because it would be nice if we could account for all of the behavior of this network in terms of a single reflection coefficient uh, gamma n. And indeed, we can do that. Uh, and I'm going to try and do that in this video using uh, what I think is simpler than uh, just walls of algebra, uh, and that's time domain analysis. So if we have our network, uh, let's say that we apply, we have a source, and we apply a voltage to it. So let's say we had a switch, and then we switched on that source at time t equals 0. And then we've got our two-port network characterized by its S parameters. And we've got, this is just connected to some arbitrary load, ZL. Well, as it's switched, as the source is switched on, uh, a wave starts to propagate in this direction. So you can think of a, a unit step propagating in that direction. And as it passes through the network, part of it will get reflected. Um, and the amount that gets reflected is just the amplitude of the incoming wave. Uh, we'll call it V1 plus. Uh, it's just the amplitude of the incoming wave times S11. So that's, that's a good start uh, because we wanted gamma in to be defined as the wave that comes back. So we have, we have a starting point. Gamma in is equal to S11. Um, but we haven't accounted for this wave. So something's going to happen to this wave that's actually kind of interesting. Well, this wave, as it gets transmitted through the network, it'll get transmitted with parameter with amplitude V1 plus times S21. And so the amplitude of the wave after it leaves this port uh, on the output side is just going to be V1 plus times S21. And then it travels along and it hits the load, and it gets reflected with value gamma L. So its new value is V1 plus times gamma L times S21. Okay, um, and you might say, well, what's what's Z naught in this case? What's uh, How are we calculating these reflection coefficients? Everything is implied to be Z naught. So every wire uh, on this diagram is supposed to be Z naught. So it's implicitly a transmission line, and that's how all of this analysis is done. And we're assuming that the z naughts are all the same. OK, so now we've got a wave that's just traveling back this direction. And I'm drawing it on the bottom just because there's more space there, not because it's actually propagating along on that wire. And at this point, part of the wave will get transmitted to the other side of the network with value. Uh, so the whole amplitude value at this point was v1 plus times gamma L times S21. And then it's going to get transmitted back to the other side, and we need to multiply it by S12. OK, so uh, that's, that's great. So gamma N is just equal to S11 plus gamma L S21 times S12, except that part of the wave that wasn't reflected, uh, or that wasn't transmitted, gets reflected again. Um, and the amount it gets reflected by is you just multiply by S22. And indeed, this reflection happening back and forth will keep 
on happening uh, forever. So what, what you end up with is you have the transmitted wave. So the first transmitted wave um, through the network is just one uh, because it's just multiplying gamma L times S21 times S12. And then the second transmitted wave is going to be, it's going to have bounced off the load one more time. And it's going to have bounced off, or actually, actually first, uh, it'll have bounced off the network. So it'll be reflected with value S22. And then it bounces off the load with value gamma L. And then it's transmitted and multiplied by S12. And Indeed, this continues to happen forever. So S22, gamma L, each of those is squared, and so on and so forth. But we can just write this whole thing as a sum uh, from n equals 0 to infinity of um, S22 times gamma L. Uh, and that's just a simple geometric series, or sorry, uh, to the n. And that's just a simple geometric series whose sum we know is 1 over 1 minus S22 gamma L. And uh, so that's awesome. We're actually, we're actually done. Oh, sorry. Um, we're actually finished. So gamma in is just equal to S11 plus gamma L S21 S12 over 1 minus gamma L times S22. And you might think, well, there's a lot of subscripts here. There's a lot to remember. But it's actually uh, pretty easy to remember this equation if you think about what's actually going on. So initially, part of the wave, wave gets reflected off the input port. So that's why we're adding S11 to this whole thing. And then the rest of the wave, it gets transmitted uh, to the other side with value S21. And all the waves uh, that bounce around and then get sent back, get sent back with value S12. And initially, uh, before it starts bouncing back infinitely off of the, uh, in the output port, it's reflected off the load with value gamma L. And then it's infinitely reflected back and forth and back and forth. And that's where this geometric series comes in. And it gives us on the new on the denominator one minus gamma l s two two, and that's just the gamma l s two two term is pretty easy to remember because you're bouncing off the load. Well, what value do you bounce off of? Well, with gamma l, and you're bouncing off of the output of the two port network, which bounces off with value s two two. So the whole equation is is fairly straightforward to remember if you just understand what it is that's going on. Uh, in terms of reflections in the in time. Uh, so what if we're interested in gamma out, uh, which is the same exact thing um, except at the output port? So what is the effective uh, reflection coefficient gamma out? If we were to transmit a wave at the output port instead of the input port, so if we put our source on the other side, uh, then what would our effective reflection coefficient be? And we could do we could redo the whole analysis, um, or we could recognize that there's a symmetry between the input and the output ports, and that's that anything that was reflected off the input port we just treat like it was instead reflected off the output port. So instead of S21, we'd put S22 because rather than reflecting off the input with value S11, just two ones, it gets reflected off the output with value S22. And then it's plus, uh, instead of gamma L, it's gamma S, because now the, and now the number of infinite bouncings is on this side, uh, the left-hand side. So it's reflecting once off of the load with value gamma S, and then infinitely off of the input port with value S11. So the numerator term is going to be 1 minus gamma s s11 because there's infinite reflections between s11 and gamma s and this is zs i'm kind of i'm being kind of loose with my uh, my notation but really everything should be connected like so and how is it transmitted back and forth well initially it's transmitted from the output port to the input port with value s12 and then all the waves that are transmitted back, it doesn't matter how many times they've reflected, they're transmitted back with value S21. 
So in the numerator, it's the same two factors, uh, S21, S12. We could rewrite it as S12 times S21, which kind of makes more sense because it's first going uh, through the output port to the input port with value S12, and then it's going back with value S21. So these are our equations for gamma out and gamma in. And uh, they're in terms of gamma L, gamma S, and the S parameters. And gamma L you can just find from the load. So you've got a certain load impedance ZL and a certain transmission line impedance Z0. Uh, gamma L we know is just ZL minus Z0 over ZL plus Z0. And similarly, gamma S, you'd have a line here, Z0, and a load here, ZS. ZS is just ZS minus Z0 over ZS plus Z0. And you might be asking, well, what Z0 do I use for this if it's not explicitly given? Uh, and the beautiful part about that is you don't actually need um, a value for Z0. Because since we're only interested in ratios here, so we're only interested in, for example, power gain, uh, the Z naughts in the end will actually cancel. So you don't need to worry about Z naught. We can only work in terms of reflection coefficients, which is a little weird uh, to think about. It's still a little weird for me, but um, everything will cancel and everything will work. So uh, we can just work in terms of S parameters and reflection coefficients.